So that's from an economic point of view, I kind of covered the high points there. Now the next question is, well, how does Microsoft do this? How does Microsoft have hundreds of thousands of servers set up? Is it secure? Where are they located? Well, this is a picture of the inside of a what's called a third generation data center. These are shipping containers that are sealed. They basically come in off the truck, plug into the wall, they can stack on top of each other, they have their own cooling units on the inside. These units are designed that over the lifespan of the servers, they expect some servers and hardware to fail inside those units. As they fail, they simply fail over to other, server, other servers inside the container. Once a critical number of servers have failed, they simply plug, take the container out, send it back, and have it um, recycled or take the data and have it um, uh, take the data and have it shipped um, with the hard drives through a magnetic. Um, it looks almost like an RFID gate as it goes through on the truck. It just strips all the data right off of that machine. This is a shot of inside one of those containers and what it looks like. Now these are lights out data centers. No one ever goes inside these servers. The people that actually control um, access to the servers are in a completely different location. The people in the center themselves can't even get into these shipping containers. So they're very highly secure. What's coming online now is Microsoft's what they call fourth generation data centers. And these are actually containers that are set up in a way to really maximize um, cooling efficiencies and reduce the power consumption. If you see these, they're actually set up outside. There's no building around them. Uh, it looks like kind of a, a, a farm with a bunch of, of trailers and it kind of coming off a big hub in the middle. Um, and there's cooling units on top or fans that pull the air from the bottom and push the hot air out the top. The, the net net of that is uh, they have a density of 10 times the amount of compute and equivalent space in a traditional data center and the power efficiency is a uh, uh, power usage effectiveness number of 1.22 which is pretty darn green when you when you're looking at a green IT movement um, there are right now more than a hundred globally distributed data centers uh, there's just a shot of a few in the, the U.S., there's one in Ireland. This is a, a rendering of what the fourth generation data center is going to look like. Um, the other interesting thing with the Microsoft Cloud options is you can choose to leverage data centers that are just in the U.S. And this is for financial services or government uh, regulations. If you need to keep that data inside the U.S., you have that choice. You can do that today. Let me take a minute to talk about what's coming um, with Office 365. Um, Office 365 is the next version of Microsoft's Business Productivity Online Suite. And what Microsoft's done is really leverage their cloud infrastructure to pass along a huge cost savings to customers that want to move into the cloud. They're going to divide this up between kiosk workers and the traditional information worker. And what the kiosk worker is, someone who doesn't have a dedicated computer or maybe they only need to a uh, access applications through a web browser. So that's going to include something like um, Outlook Web Access, SharePoint, um, and then have access to applications like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint that are web versions that simply live in the browser. Then you have the traditional information worker who's going to have Office on their desktop they're going to need more storage in their uh, Exchange Server mailbox. What's going to be announced um, in the summer of 2011 is a pricing plan that's going to be similar to this one. Now, this is not finalized at this point, but basically I'm showing this slide to, to give an idea of the way uh, companies can bundle these packages. So for a kiosk worker, maybe they just need email and a portal, $4 a month retail. Enterprise customers that have uh, three, five, ten thousand users and sign an EA agreement are going to get much more favorable pricing. This is simply list pricing. Um, you're also going to have the ability to license um, Office web applications for your um, uh, information workers, or if you want to license Office Professional Plus on the desktop on a monthly basis, 
this E3 plan here is going to work for them. And it gives some enterprise features as well for Exchange and SharePoint Online, things like Excel and Visio services. At a later date, there's going to be another plan that includes voice integration with PBXs um, using Microsoft Link, which was Office Communication Server. That was a lot of information, but I wanted to cover the high-level economics of the cloud, give you a flavor of what Microsoft's doing from an infrastructure point of view to service the cloud, and then talk a little bit about what's coming with Office 365. If you need more information, you can always go to Microsoft.com slash cloud or hit uh, eastridge.net, and I'd always be happy to answer email uh, at my email address listed here. Thank you very much.